So, <coughs> dear students, now here in this video, I will tell you Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion. Uh, excuse me for some inconvenience to produce Newton's second law of motion. Actually, Newton's first law defines the force qualitatively, means quality of force is defined by first law that is the force, what is force? Force can change the state of rest or the state of motion. This is the quality of force. The quality of force is that the force can change the state of rest or state of motion or tries to change it. But what is second law? Newton's second law defines force quantitatively. Quantitatively means how much force will produce, how much acceleration. That is known by understanding Newton's second law. I mean, oh, take light one here. Take away. So, what is Newton's second law? <coughs> I have written this on board for to save the time. According to this law, when an unbalanced external force applied on a body, then an acceleration is produced in the body. This is the first sentence. According to this law, when an unbalanced external force applied on a body, then an acceleration is produced by the body. The acceleration A, I, I, I think you know definition of acceleration, change in velocity per unit time, vector A is equal to delta V upon delta T, that is V2 minus V1 upon T2 minus T1. So when unbalanced force applied on body, an acceleration is produced. Acceleration, we have learned in previous chapter, that is change in velocity. Hmm. Means when we apply force, velocity of body changes, that other way also. So according to this law, when an unbalanced external force applied on a body, then acceleration produced in the body. The acceleration A vector is there, acceleration vector quantity n. Acceleration produced is proportional to the unbalanced external force F applied on the body and is and inversely proportional to inversely proportional to the mass of the body. This is the statement, Anna. Then how to write it uh, mathematically? So we can say okay, if a force F produces produces an acceleration acceleration. A in a body of mass M, then according to Newton's second law. Vector A proportional to F by M. Acceleration greater the force, more the acceleration, larger the mass, smaller the acceleration. People are very much confused, even some authors don't write first like this. 
and and that added a confusion here, a misunderstanding. What is that misunderstanding? When we apply force on a body, motion is produced. Force does not produce motion. Force causes acceleration. That is, the state of rest or state of motion will change. This is the quality of force. Force causes the change in state of rest or state of motion. And change in state of rest or state of motion may be defined in terms of acceleration. Acceleration is a vector quantity, V2 minus V1. And direction of acceleration is along V2 minus V1. Means difference of velocity. Direction of difference of velocity, direction of acceleration. So please, as a, no, please, uh, don't get uh, deviated from this. Actually, uh, we write it also like this. So we will keep on telling the things other way also. Or we can write F factor proportional to MA. Or F is equal to KMA. Where K is constant or proportionality. K is constant. Or proportionality. Proportionality. The system of units. The system of units have been the systems of units have been chosen in such a way that k equal to 1. So, Newton's second law can also be written as f is equal to m a. f is equal to m a. Dear student, please be careful. If left hand side is representing a vector quantity, then right side should also represent a vector quantity. So please never write like this k is equal to m a. It is totally wrong. It no, here you are losing the homogeneity of equation. If left hand side vector, then right side should be vector. So be very careful. Now further we extend it. Uh, this law also as we know as just I told you a is equal to v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1. So f vector is equal to come n bracket v2 minus v1 upon t2 minus t1. Or you can write f equal to m v2 minus m v1 upon t2 minus t1. I told in previous video that product of mass and velocity is momentum. But we know p equal to m v. p is the momentum. Mass and the mass. So we can write here f is equal to p2 minus p1 upon t2 minus t1. Or mathematically we write that f is equal to delta p upon delta t. So state of rest or state of motion changes means momentum changes. If state of rest or state of motion of body changes, it means 
momentum changes. So, and hence we can say that <coughs> change in momentum, change in momentum of a body, of a body for unit time, for unit time is equal to <coughs> unbalanced unbalanced external force applied on the moon. Other way, no. We can write here F is equal to M A. Vector F is equal to M A. Or F is equal to delta P upon delta T. Delta P means change momentum. By three times one. If delta T tending to zero, means the delta T very small. Here is also very great confusion. Delta T tending to zero. What does it mean? Means it is a small interval with respect to some large interval of time, not zero. I will explain anywhere else also. Then, then, then F equal to written as dP over dt. Change in momentum per unit time is force. Uh, some author write like this rate of change in momentum is force. I, I don't agree with them. Because momentum may change this with distance also. So it is not correct to say. We should, it is correct to say change in momentum per in time is equal to unbalanced external force applied on the body. So <coughs> F is equal to M A or F equal to delta P over delta T by noting the mass and by an acceleration produced in the body we can measure the force we can measure the quantity of force so that way Newton's second law defines force quantitatively ok uh, so in next video I will tell uh, something about unit of force not here because it has become lengthy. Thank you.